So the domain of root functions is, and this only really applies if the index is even. If the index is even, then the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. It can't, it, it, it's okay if it does equal zero. It just can't be anything. Anything less than zero makes it a non-real solution, okay? So it's okay if it's equal to zero, but it should be greater than, which is why we use an inequality like this one. All right, so let's find the domain on this one. So in other words, we need x plus 1 to be greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise, the, that square root will be some imaginary non-real number. So hopefully we remember our rules for solving inequalities. Same as an equation, except for when we divide by a negative, then it's going to flip that sign. So as long as x is greater than or equal to negative 1, then we're in good shape. That's okay for our domain right there. The domain is, I guess that's kind of sloppy, but that's, that's fine. The domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, let's look at graphing this thing. So we're not going to look for any values of x that are less than negative 1 because that would give us a non-real solution. And that means the graph will stop there as well in the x for our x's. So when graphing these, it'd be good to make a table. And we got our x's and y's. Now, this is good because we can have negative 1, that x is negative 1, right? So in other words, we'd have the square root of negative 1 plus 1, which would be the square root of 0, which is 0. See, so it's okay if it's equal to 0. Now, we can't go any lower than negative 1, so I'm going to move up from there. I'm going to try 0 and see what I get, okay? So this would be uh, 0 plus 1, which is the square root of 1, which is 1, all right? So that gives me two points right now to put on the graph. I got a negative 1, 0. Then I got a 0, 1. Um, I have to be careful with these as well because if I put in a 1 right here, then it gives me the square root of 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 2. This is irrational, so I'm not going to use 2. I would find the same thing if I used 2 as well. So I'm not going to use 2. I mean, you can. You just be estimating where those points are, which may be extremely difficult on the computers, all right? I need something plus one to be a perfect square. Now, if I list my perfect squares, I, I guess zero is kind of one, but one is a good one, which would be one times one. The next one would be two times two, which is four. So if I can find some way to make x plus one to equal four, then I'm good. So yeah, x in this case would be three, and y would be the square root of 4, which is 2. So that gives me this point 3, 2. My next perfect square would be 3 times 3, which is 9. So I need something plus 1 to equal 9. Well, I would just use 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So on this graph, I would find 8... 3, which would be about right here. And then I'm just looking to graph this line, which is a little difficult on uh, iPad. Hopefully we see how that's nonlinear, especially based on the 980 class. Uh, the rate of change on this is not consistent, so it is not a straight line. It's definitely, the x's are getting farther apart as y's are going up by 1. So... Definitely not linear. Notice on this graph, it stops here, and it won't go down any further. However, that would work because the domain, well, it can't go any farther to the left. That's, that's our domain, the x values.